Hi all, I'm Carlos, I'm representing MUPIS team on Educational Solutions, and I'm going to provide a super quick update on the work done this spring. I'll leave most of the time to Sabi, UX designer for MUPIS, and Julia, content designer for PX, who are going to introduce us to the prototyping process for the MUE project. Over to you, Julia and Sabi. Thank you, Carlos. Hi, everyone. I'm Sabina. And I'm going to be talking about the process Julia and I follow for the default type completion settings project. As Carlos says, uh, this is a project fostered by the MUA. And the proposal was to reuse the default completion settings space that we have at the course level for the site level completion default. And here you have the links to the two uh, tracker issues that we have for the project. Next slide, please, Adrian. So for the project, we follow a content design focus approach and Julia and I worked uh, together from the very beginning of the process. The first step uh, we follow was analyzing the page that the MUA wanted to reuse. And this included <coughs> sorry, the page as, as a whole and its functionality. Um, next slide, please, Adrian. And also analyzing the activity completion settings for each of the activities at course level and comparing these settings to the ones of each individual activity. So during the analysis, we found some inconsistencies between activity and course level settings. And these were that some settings were only at the activity level, like for example, in the uh, right screen so that you can see that uh, the required grade <coughs> setting uh, have more options like whole, forum, or rating, grading that uh, are not visible in the uh, course level. And also, uh, the completion settings at activity level were using some progressive disclosure, while the one in the default uh, course level were using non uh, progressive disclosure. So, as you can see on the left screenshot, even though we have system do not indicate activity completion, we are still displaying all the settings that are disabled because um, obviously we, we choose uh, an option that don't track the completion. Next slide, please. So the decision that we made was making both experience consistent so that the new uh, site level settings that the MUA uh, wanted will be congruent with the activity and course level settings as well. So the next step that we follow in the process was creating flow diagrams of all uh, completion settings for each of uh, Moodle core activities and resources, as you can see here in the screenshot. And I'm going to pass on to Julia uh, to continue the presentation. Hi, um, next slide, Adrian, please. So after working on the flow diagrams for all activities and resources, we started grouping them together based on um, common completion requirements. For example, there's many resources that only had the view requirement, while other activities um, had submission or posting requirements, some support grades, some don't, et cetera. These a grouping of the activities allowed us to get a deeper understanding of the logic of the requirements. Um, next slide, please. And it also allowed us to detect uh, pain points and things that we could improve. For example, like Sabina said, people are seeing many settings at the same time. Some of these settings are not relevant to them uh, according to the option they just selected, so it can be a bit confusing and overwhelming. We also saw that the labels for all setting names and the options start with the same words, like require, 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 and student must, student must, and that makes information not easily scannable. We also noticed that we were allowing people to select options that might be redundant, for example, require a grade and require a passing grade, and even some contradictory settings. And finally, we also noticed that an essential part of the information is hidden here behind the help pop-up or tooltip, um, which is that uh, when you select these requirements, um, all of them must be complete in order for the activity to be marked as done. So um, next slide, please. Then we had um, an ideation session focusing on three of the groups that we had identified. The goal of the session was to simplify the way in which people can define completion requirements and to address the pain points. And we did that by using progressive disclosure so people can take one decision at a time only and are not overwhelmed with things that are not relevant to them. 
using simpler and more action-oriented language. For example, instead of saying show activity as complete when conditions are met for people to select um, conditions, we just have like add conditions. And then we also decided to show information that's essential, which is that all requirements have to be completed. Um, and finally, there was also a bulk editing feature for completion requirements. At course level, we looked at that and we realized it was difficult to use, not very useful, and it added more clicks to the experience. So the team decided um, both not to add this to the new site level settings and also to remove it from the course level settings. And we brought that up with CMUA and they agreed. So now I'm going to pass it back to Sabina so she can do the demo. Thank you, Julia. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Perfect. Um, right. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, we've added a, a new section in the site administration in the course tab. Uh, called default settings, in which we added a new page uh, to be uh, for the admin to define the um, defaults for each activity at a site level. I'm going to just go through one of the activities, one of the most used ones, because we don't have much time. Uh, but you have the link to the prototype in this slide, so you can play around if you want. So as you can see, we have this page with some information in here and all the activities listed here. And when we, for example, go to forum, we see that if we select non-completion tracking, we won't show any settings. Uh, we can select the manual completion here. Um, and we can uh, select the uh, automated completion, which is the most complicated one with more settings. And as you can see here, we are using the progressive disclosure, only displaying this, the relevant settings uh, when the user make a selection. And this will happen uh, as well with the child settings that we have under some main settings, uh, as you can see in posting forums. And once each of the settings is selected, we will display then the input fields or any other components that will be um, necessary to complete the settings, as uh, here the number of discussions or post replies that uh, this student needs to do. And also, uh, like uh, Julia mentioned, we've changed slightly the way in which we display the received grade and passing grade. So we don't display few redundant settings, and it's a little bit easy to, to use. Um, we have as well the whole uh, forum or grading um, grade setting uh, that we only had at activity level. We make uh, consistent with size and course level. And here we basically uh, can change the the grade, uh, passing grade, and so on. And once uh, the admin is uh, done with the settings, we will have the save button in the sticky footer, and we will see a confirmation uh, that all the settings have been changed and have been updated. Um, yeah, this is it from me. The uh, project is a little bit uh, wider, and you will be able to see also in the prototype uh, what we've done for the course level, because the settings are slightly different in course level. Uh, so you can play around with the prototype if you want. Um, yeah, that's it from me.